um i think i've spent money every single day this month i'm just gonna take a sip because i might need it oh it is may mid-month for me it is today is may 6 actually and i know that it's not may mid-month because that would be around the 15th but in terms of budget this is mid-month for me so one of your suggestions was to do a budget mid-month check-in and here we are this is the first one that i'm doing and i'm hoping that i'm able to do these every single month and share with you the progress around the budget so let's go ahead and get right to it this is Saray from Saray Plans and in this video we're doing a mid-month budget check-in for the month of May. If you are new to my channel, I'd love for you to stick around by subscribing. I'll be posting videos each week and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Um, all the links for any of the items that I use or reference in this video will be added in the description section so be sure to expand that. And should you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. All right, so you might be wondering why I'm doing a mid-month budget on May 6th. Well, the reason for that is because I have mentioned this in other videos before, is that I budget from one paycheck to the next paycheck. So I also budget one paycheck ahead of the month. So for example, my budget for the month of May started on April 24th and it'll go through the pay period of May 8th. And then on the following pay period, which would be on May 22nd, I would use that May 22nd um, pay in order to budget for the month of June. So right now, because we're almost at May 8th, or today is the 6th, I am technically halfway through my budgeting period. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at April, just because I do need to sort of reconcile some transactions and some not not spending or no spend for the month of April uh, because I started on that pay period of the 24th. All right, I think I had a pretty good month the end of April where I did not spend except for the EC launch day on the 27th for EC insiders. I did spend and I did not spend for the rest of the month. So I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine actual spend days so let's see if we can reduce that in the month of may uh, for gifts i did not really buy any gifts in the month of april even though my intentions were to get ahead of this so i'm just going to move these over um, i did cancel the hotel and flight um, did i stick to a budget yeah i did actually i did pretty good uh, for the most part and then tracking no spends I just did that so overall pretty good um, bills this one also got paid and then this one got paid so I think I'm good with that so we're ready to move on to May all right so uh, for let's start with the no spend here um, I think I've spent money every single day this month all right and actually no I did not spend on the third but i did spend on the first the second the fourth and the fifth so time to buckle down uh my grandmother's birthday i did get so that is done and then i do need to pay these two bills on the eighth and these have not happened yet actually our gym is not charging us because of the whole coronavirus situation and they're closed. So they're not charging us. So I'm going to cancel that one. And I think that is it for now. Okay. So moving on to the sinking funds. So this were the sinking funds for April 24th. And I added all of the sinking funds. So I transferred the money. Uh, but I did have a transaction that I had to deduct and that is for my car registration. So my, I forgot that my car tags are actually due in April, May timeframe. So I had to transfer some money out of um, our savings account. So I'm probably going to create a separate sinking fund for that. I totally forgot about it, but I'm going to probably do a separate one because I don't have one here. I have one for car insurance and I had another category, but I just got rid of it. 
and I just started dumping it, dumping it in the general savings. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a separate one for that. Um, but anyway, so I deducted $356 to pay for that uh, and then carried the balance. So now my new balance in savings um, would be $2,552. And now for May 8th, these are the same sinking funds. I won't add the one for the car tags this time around. I'll probably do it for the next pay period or the next budget for uh, June, uh, but I'm just going to keep these here. So it's still going to be 410 total for the sinking fund. So I'll check that off as soon as I transfer that on Friday. And then my goal is to do uh, some sort of um, savings deposits as well. But this might need to be adjusted. So it might not necessarily be that. Um, but I do need to track one additional. Oh, actually, I do need to track one additional transaction here so for my grandmother's birthday i got her um a gift card um so that was on five four so today is actually her birthday so i'm gonna go ahead and stop by and give her some flowers and her gift um but that was uh let's see so this would be from savings so that was 250. So that is actually going to, so 252 minus 250. That'll bring the balance down to 2302. And now the reason why I took it out of savings is because I got rid of the gifts and holidays sinking fund category and I decided to just dump it in there just because it was just too many categories to keep track of and it was just getting a little confusing. So I try to simplify. Eventually I might bring that back, but who knows? So anyway, um, technically our gifts and holidays categories is in our savings section. So that's $250. So I'm going to deduct that and then I'm going to uh, bring that balance down. So I'll just carry it over uh, next time. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to add up the monies that I'm going to transfer into the sinking funds because I pretty religiously do transfer uh, the same amount every single pay period to the sinking fund. So that is not going to change. So I will add those here. All right. I don't total it here on the bottom. I just do a little line and then that's going to be the total. So on Friday, I'm going to transfer that $410 over to the sinking funds account. And then I'll go ahead and put in the final number that I'm transferring for savings, which I may have to adjust based on the spending on this section. So for sinking funds for 424, it was 410. So I transfer that nothing to savings, um, our mortgage, life insurance, um, at and I did end up spending a little less and I changed my phone. So it's less now, but it won't be less later. So I ended up coming under uh, by $42. And typically I do put the difference here, but I was so used to writing the date that I just wrote the date instead of the difference. So I'm just going to leave it like that. But anyway, so that's $42 under and <clears throat> for Nelnet. So my payments are currently on deferment until October because of the health crisis. My plan was to continue to uh, actually pay every single month. Um, but I decided not to for this month just because I had some additional um, expenses and some things that um, came up. So anyway, uh, and this is you know, one of the reasons why it's hard to actually stick to, you know, paying extra debt down because if there is an opportunity to not have to pay it, for me at least, I know that it's really hard to actually commit. Now, last month I did pay it and my plan is obviously to resume to pay it even though it's not a required payment. I'm still going to pay it next month, but it's just, we're just going to move on. <laughs> anyway, um, so for variable expenses, I 
talked about this in my last budget video. So what I do is I keep track of, I use my debit card. I haven't been really using any cash. So I track all of my transactions in my check register. And then I know the date that I actually spend. So that's how I track my no spend days because I keep track of them here. So I can just go back and say, okay, I spent money on this day or I didn't spend money on that day, etc. So anyway, um, I can do the same thing with all of the variable expenses. So anything that is not a bill, I go ahead and tally them up. So I added them up already. So I ended up spending a little bit over uh, my budgeted amount, which was $300. So I ended up spending 460. Yeah, $460. So I went over by $160. So that means that for this pay period, I might have to adjust this to, I think, what is it? Um, 440 for this pay period. Um, so I might have to adjust that. And I will go ahead, these bills I still have not come out just yet, so I'm going to go ahead and add them on uh, later on. So, so far, not so good. Um, so I would probably give myself a one star on this goal. Uh, and what I do is I sort of rate myself on how I'm doing. So my first goal here was do not exceed the variable expense amount for the first pay period. And I did, so that is terrible. But I'm not gonna kick myself because I still have time to sort of make up for it on the second pay period. And I still have not added new listings to the shop. I have them and I have so many ideas, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that uh, at some point, hopefully before the end of the month. But that's how I'm doing so far. Anyway. Uh, I hope you're doing a little bit better than I am <laughs> uh, under the circumstances. And, you know, we have to give ourselves some some grace, too. It is uh, unprecedented times and, you know, things happen. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. And thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll see you next time.